Welcome back to the Total Focus Podcast. I'm your host, Paul. Episode 2. Our guest today is Leia, Mrs. DC America 2018. One of the things you're going to learn about Leia is that she's gone through several steps in her life to be the success that she is today. Through being a recording artist to competing several times for the MRS title. She's done everything she can to be the success and hardworking person that she is today. So I hope you guys totally enjoy our first interview with her and stay tuned. Our special guest this week is Leia, MRS DC America 2018. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. One of the reasons why I wanted to bring Leia on today was to talk about the difference between the MRS pageant and a Miss pageant. The big component with being in a married pageant is all the responsibilities that go into it. You might have family members, you have a husband, you might have children. So unlike in a Ms. pageant where it's just yourself and you can be very selfish, in a in an MRS pageant, you have so many people relying on you and so many more stresses. It's definitely a more complicated uh, pageant. So when you win that MRS pageant, it's definitely way more fulfilling. Yeah, it's a, it's an entirely different component, um, but I think that it starts with your support system at home and really... My husband is my number one supporter, and he has been throughout this whole process. But I've also ran into women who, you know, it can bring out challenges in your marriage. So if you attempt to do something new that creates a new dynamic within your marriage, it can kind of highlight those challenges. Whereas for my husband and I, I feel like we're even closer because it's just shown me how willing he is to support me and pursue my dreams as well as his. I mean, you're absolutely right. It's the one thing with the MRS pageants that are absolutely a given. Either you have a lot of babies afterwards or you have a lot of divorces. So um, we'd love to not have that trend anymore, but that's kind of the ebb and flow. Yeah. I I think that more often it's – it's kind of crazy after a pageant gets done because either there'll be a bunch of babies, we always say, or there'll be a bunch of divorces. And you don't want that in the misses system. But it just, you know, like I said, it can bring out the ebb and flow of everyday life and make it that much harder. So tell us all about your first real experience with the MRS DC pageant and how you came across it, learned all about it and decided to do your first competition. Sure. So I was being fitted for my wedding dress. Coincidentally, it was my second wedding dress. My first wedding dress was a disaster. I have still never to this day worn it. (laughs) The place that I bought it from, they never asked how tall I was. And so they didn't realize that being 5'9", that they would I would need a longer dress. So when I got that dress, it was too short, which then led me in a panic to a designer in Leesburg, um, Kathy Abrada. And so as she was fitting me for my dress, she was like, you would be a great Mrs. DC. I had a friend who ran for Mrs. DC and she was wonderful. And it's just propelled her life in a whole different way than she had thought that it was going to go. And so this was before my wedding, obviously, and my husband and I got married on New Year's Eve 2016. Well, that's really romantic. It is. Our first date was New Year's Eve, and he also proposed on New Year's Eve, so. (laughs) Well, you made it really easy for him not to forget those dates. Very easy for him, but he's he's a romantic. If anybody was going to forget our anniversary, that would a thousand percent be me. (laughs) He's he's the best. But I came back from, so I looked into it and I just kind of shrugged it off. And obviously we were getting married and I then came back from my honeymoon. That was probably mid-January of 2017. 
And I just happened to pull up the website again, and I kept pushing myself, saying, do something that scares you. You've kind of been in the box. I was doing really well at work. He was doing really well at work. But I'd kind of lost that creative side of me. And I just had always felt like I was meant to do more with my life than what I was doing. So did you have that feeling that you had a natural calling to be on stage? I definitely think I had a natural calling to be on stage and to inspire other women to do things that really challenge them. So that was two days before the cutoff for (laughs) DC. Cutting it close there, weren't you? Just a little bit. And I just made the jump and my husband um, thought I was crazy. (laughs) And but he supported me. He said, if this is what you want to do. And Kathy signed on to be my designer of my dress for that year. And so I had about, I think that year the pageant was in March. So I had two months, I had never done a pageant, didn't have a coach. (laughs) So yeah, So let me get this right. So you've never been a pageant. You've never competed on stage. And you only have two months to prepare. No, I did not. That was my first year that I ran for Mrs. DC. So I won photogenic. I won best costume. I was second runner up. So I did not win. But I also didn't have a coach, knew nothing about pageantry. I just kind of went off of my own research and did my own due diligence. And I was very happy with how I did. And I was mad because I don't like to lose. <laughs> I don't think anyone <laughs> likes to lose, especially when you put your time and money into it. So. Well, and to be that close, it's not like I didn't make the top six, right? So to be that close and then just fall a little bit short, I think that was the real kicker for me. Now, you, you, where did you um, place your first year? So I was second runner up at DC. Okay. Now for people that are not pageant people, you're just getting into it. Second runner up in pageant means third. So, Correct. So um, we, we like to be polite and say second runner up. So it makes everyone feel better. So <laughs> Yes, that is third. But you know, for your first year to be third, have two months of, um, of honestly, ex- um, What's the right word? Time to prepare. That's not a bad showing. And uh, and how many people were in that competition that year? Six, I wanna, seven people? No, I want to say it was closer to 13 or 14. Oh, well, wow. Okay. Yeah. It was, it was not a small group by any means. A lot of the women, you know, there was choreography. There was an opening number. A lot of the women had been prepping for this since – june of the prior year so i was very much so behind the curve <laughs> oh, absolutely and but you know i also won photogenic which i was very happy about because i feel like that was one thing that i felt really good about going in at least i could take a good photo <laughs> well that does help a lot if you you do look good in front of a mirror um i'm not gonna lie it's kind of the one it, it, it is a beauty pageant so it is. So now that you you're in your you, you've got, had your your first experience. So what do you think you really learned in that first year that um, really accelerated you to actually win the following year? Because you won the following year, right? I did win the following year, and I did um, kind of what they would call is an all sweep. So I won fitness, I won photogenic, and I won overall. And I think, I, I mean, the biggest difference is, you know, having a year to prepare as opposed to having two months to prepare. I did also hire a coach, and the biggest thing that he taught me was is I was in my own way. Everyone else saw me as this beautiful statuesque person, and that's just not how I viewed myself. And you could tell in the first year that I just didn't have the confidence in who I was. And that really didn't have anything to do with anyone else. It was just work that I needed to do on myself. So my goal going into competing for 2018 was, how can I be the best version of me? 
because I didn't want to try and be like another pageant contender, which a lot of women do. They pick out someone they want to look like or they want to be like. And I think that really puts you at a detriment because there's only a best version of you. You're never going to be the best version of someone else. You can only get to your best part. And I truly believed, I think, the day of competition for Mrs. D.C., I truly believe that whether or not I won or lost, I was happy because I was the best version of myself I'd ever been. I mean, I think that's the most important thing about pageant is allowing you to start somewhere and then aggress to to be more motivated. Like you had said earlier that you had a calling to be on stage and you knew that you had more potential to offer and to do and you were being I, I guess I'm gonna put it in my word stagnating at work so you wanted to not, you know do something more to to, f- to be feel more um fulfilled in life am I right down the road yeah absolutely and you know the crazy thing is is throughout this whole year I mean obviously I went to nationals and we can talk about that in a little bit but I was a vice president at a bank and I had been for the last 14 years and I quit my job in November <laughs> Okay. So, so it's really, it's, really it's, dr- it's dramatically changed dramatically like changed your career but also your personal life and like how you how you are just in day to day cool absolutely i just wanted to take one second from this great interview and talk about our sponsor of the week mid-atlantic video and photography productions no matter if you're planning a wedding a special event or you just need an amazing headshot They are the team to get the job done. You can reach out to them at 443-422-3830. Again, that's 443-422-3830. Or you can go just go right to their website at mavpp.com. Now let's get right back to the show and listen to this great interview. So just a small background. So you you were explaining that your personality was um, more subtle. So how would you describe um, growing up? Um, were you a tom girl, a tomboy, or were you did, – did you just hang out with a group of girls or a group of guys? Like, I mean, how if – you, if you're saying you were more low-key. Um, no, you know? I, I actually wasn't. I was, I was very much an entertainer. I did dance all throughout high school. I did shows. I performed. I sang. I acted just everything that you can imagine as far as being on stage. But somewhere along the lines, I lost my confidence. You know, I had recorded an album at Paramount Studios in Los Angeles. Like, there were so many. At the time, I, I that was my thing. I was destined to perform and destined to do those things. And I got in a bad relationship and I had some health problems. And it's just kind of spiraled into me going to a dark place that I never... You, you don't realize you're in it until you're in it. And then you have to try and dig your way back out of it. So would you attribute meeting Mr. Wright and doing the pageant to helping you excel at this point now a thousand percent I mean my husband he loved me before I loved me so that's a pretty incredible thing well love can really does help 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 to um, cure a lot of heartache so um, I think a lot of people can understand that Um, I'm I'm totally like I want to know more about this record career. So, <laughs> so, um, what type of music? Uh, I know it's totally weird. I, I, see, this is what I love about the the show is I want to have this uh, really unique, organic conversation. So, please tell us all about this. What was the genre? What was the the, the idea behind it? Because not that many people get an opportunity to go into a real radio, a real studio, and record an album. So, please tell us all about it. Yeah, so I wrote my own music at the time, so it was more pop, a little bit of R&B. I always just, I've had a very soulful voice, and it's one of the things, that's probably my biggest thing that I have not gotten back to, so pageantry was a way for me to get back on stage, and... 
So if the if the America system had a talent, would you have would you have sung? Yes. Okay. Yep. That would have been that would have been a precursor to force me to face my fear again. <laughs> okay. So, um, I think we're very close in age. I'm thirty. I'm thirty six. I'm thirty. I'm thirty six. You don't have to say your name because you're a woman. But I would say. Oh no. That- I- I don't mind because I look very young and I'm very proud that I look as <laughs> young as I do for my age. So I'm happy to say I'm 32. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> so you're, you're in the same close age range. So I'm an 82 baby. So um, you're doing your music, what, early 2000s? Late 2000s? The, the- yeah. It was right kind of in the, it was, I'm trying to think probably mid so I had moved it was after I had moved to Kansas City because I grew up in Michigan I moved to Kansas City in 2008 so it was between let's say 2008 2012 okay and you did all of this recording in Kansas City then no I actually I flew to California I recorded in California and then the guy that I had been working with as a manager uh, got into some legal trouble and it just kind of deterred me from the music business but music industry is kind of um shady I guess it is it, it's weird i don't know why it's that way you know but music, the interest music can help you so much soulfully but like it's so so weird how it's um it's just weird But I think the older you get, you realize you don't have to necessarily be the biggest star in the room if you get to share your talent with people and it truly affects them. And, you know, one of my things as a title holder, I had so many moms come up to me and say, thank you so much for being nice to my daughter. And I looked at them like, have you met other queens that aren't nice to your kids? (laughs) Because please give me their name and phone number so I can call them and discuss this. (laughs) I mean, I don't want to start making a list of people, but, you know. Yeah. It's always appreciated when someone's super nice and actually cares about um, the young lady in anything, if they're doing singing, dancing, pageants, um, performancing, you know. Just caring about your fellow man is is a, um, is a good trait to have, you know. Well, I think that, you know, for me, I'm also vegan, which most people know because it's something I'm very proud of. But I think living the lifestyle that I love animals and I'm nurturing to all animals, like that includes humans, but sometimes we forget to be nice to our fellow man or woman. And as women in the pageantry world, you can be very competitive and very, (sighs) but there's enough, there's enough room for everyone at the top. That's the whole point. I I can't disagree. Uh, Yes. One person takes home the crown, but everyone can be um, recognized and have an opportunity to be a special person. So yes, one person gets this little shiny little crown. Mm-hmm. You know, but everyone can be appreciated in one way. You know, it, it's 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 just simple fact. One person is going to. I I really believe in you have to you have to uh, be straightforward with kids and uh, adults. One person's going to win. And, and as long as you understand that and and um, appreciate that you have take the opportunity to to be here and, and fully fledge um, the experience that life would be much, much better because all, there's only space for one winner, but everyone else has opportunity to experience it. So don't, don't have a negative um, connotation just because you didn't win the crown. Well, everything happens for a reason. And I firmly believe that. And if I would have been upset that I didn't win the first year, that I never would have met the people that I met while I was preparing and I never would have had the opportunities. I have a radio show in DC with two of my now best friends. I never would have had that if I would have won the crown that year. I wouldn't have had time to do some of these other things. I wouldn't have had some of the modeling opportunities that I've had and other things that have come up because of not winning the crown. And 
honestly, if I would have won the crown the first year, then I wouldn't have gotten to win the crown when I was the best version of myself. And isn't that when you want to win? I Yeah, exactly. You want to win when you actually are fully capable of, of honoring that title. You know, if you're going to be, if you're going to be the title holder, you're going to need to go to appearances. That means you're going to be able to look good and you have to have the time and the effort. So, you know, it, it's not just that day on the stage. It's the entire year. So you have, yep. to, you know, and some people, they want to, you want to win the world series, but it's all the things that lead up to winning the World Series. It's going to the batting cage and learning how to catch and, and putting all the, the practices in for years before you actually get the opportunity to actually play for the World Series. So it's the same kind of thing. You put all that extra effort in that second year, like you were saying. You've got a pageant coach. You've got a better dress. you got a really good head shot. You know? And then it sounds like you also were really able to work on yourself personally and be in a good frame of mind. Well, I think that's one piece that a lot of title holders and girls prepping for pageants, they do all of the right motions, right? They get the headshot, they get the dress, they get the shoes, they they get the swimsuit, their body looks great. But mentally, that's a huge piece of it. And mentally is where a lot of women aren't good. And you just I've seen it time and time again, some of the strongest contenders and they go in though, and they just can't overcome that barrier. So would you agree? Cause the, the, the comment that I, the, the, the um, thing I always promote with the girls is the interview is really, really important to really understand how to be a good, go into an interview and actually look and talk authentic. Do you agree Pe- that's the is that the one of the best steps to winning the, any pageant? Well, here's the thing. If you're pretty, right? You're going to be pretty. They all can see that you're pretty. And if you're very rehearsed, that's also not terrible. But then if you're so rehearsed to the point that when you're answering questions, there's no emotion, there's no and that's why as you're working with coaches, the true coaches are not going to tell you what to say. They may tell you how to say it. They may tell you how to angle your body. Or if you're talking about something that tends to be a little on the sadder side, just bring it up at the end, you know, to kind of keep the energy up in the room. So those are all great tips. But the biggest thing I see is people can smell from a mile away if you're not being authentic in an interview. And if you're not buying what you're selling, <laughs> they'll know. <laughs> oh, I absolutely agree. I mean, but I think a lot of people do that normally when you just meet the person for the first time. Most people, um, when I was taking psychology, they say it's the three-second rule. You know, in the first three seconds, you can tell if you like or hate the person. And then it's really hard um, from that point on to really change that person's opinion. So. Just it's very, very difficult. Right. So, all right. So, you have a new husband. You've gone through that first pageant. You have this past experience of making a, a, uh, a record, um, but just not having it. I guess you, you did. You have it. Um, did you have it produced and actually on stale floor, or you, you just, or you just recorded it? Uh, so I recorded and had three recorded and produced, three okay. songs, but so, didn't go past that. All right, so you have that experience, mm-hmm. all built up into this pageant, which was in 2008. So you have all this experience, okay? You've got, you've got your interview, you're, you're working really hard on that. You crushed your photo, crushed your gown. So how did that week go into that pageant? What was the field like? How many people? So 2018, we had, I want to say 13 girls, 13 or 14. It was still a pretty big group. And the difference was, is actually in the first year, I 
I didn't feel as <laughs> I didn't feel the competition was as intense as the second year. <laughs> I was. I mean, it turned yeah, me in, you know. Yeah. I mean, you and, won, so you can say ha ha. <laughs> I mean, it's not polite, but ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the competition was intense. There were so many women that were beautiful and they were accomplished and. I was very much to myself, which I'm very good friends with a lot of the girls that I competed with that year, but I didn't talk as openly to all of them. And that had nothing to do with me being not friendly. I was just very focused. And so when I was at pageant events, I was there to do what I had to do and then leave. And I think sometimes we think women are being mean at events or they're one way and it could just be that they are very, very focused. And the week of the pageant was a very, very difficult week for me. And so they say that the world kind of comes crashing down on you before something good happens. And I do believe that. And so I remember at our final rehearsal at the French Embassy in D.C., I came out and I had two hundred dollars worth of parking tickets on my car. Just two hundred, right? Not, not a big deal, right? No. Did they boot your car too? They did not, but you know, I called my husband, who is very frugal, <laughs> and he. I was expecting a him man to of just my own heart. So yes, <laughs> I was expecting him to not be thrilled, and he just goes, "Whatever, babe, it's not a big deal." And that was the best response he could have ever had I mean, what for is that he supposed day. To do? Like, I love DC so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So then I had actually a very dear friend of mine who was my best friend all through um, high school died of an overdose that same week. So, and they were having her, they didn't actually do a funeral, but they were having a memorial for her on the day of the pageant. So I could not be at her memorial because I was competing. But coincidentally, she the whole reason she developed an addiction was through an opioid. So to me, it was, you know, Victoria's voice and kind of tying in that whole platform. I just had much more to say at Mrs. America because this has just affected me greatly. Well, that, well, I mean, this is a perfect example to talk. So what was your platform? So people know. So my platform is, was actually twofold, uh, part vegan plant-based living, and then also adults with disabilities. And I think that they, we talk about kids with disabilities a lot, right? And the program through school and things that they get to do and activities, but what happens when those kids get older and they don't have school and they don't have jobs to go to. So I work with ECHO, which is a nonprofit organization in Leesburg, Virginia, and we provide day transportation. We provide a place for them to go. They can do skills placement and find a job if they want to work. And it's the, the rise in autism rates every year is so drastically high that people just don't understand. I mean, what happens to the parents of these autistic people if they pass away and they have nobody? You know, there has to be programs like this. And it's a huge problem that we don't have anything for disabled people to do except watch TV 10 hours a day. So I have a, um, I have a good girlfriend. She has a son with autism. Um, my cousin has cerebral palsy and I grew up with someone who had Down syndrome and I just, they are the happiest people in the world. We could learn so much from them because even though they have every struggle every single day, they wake up with a smile on their face every single day. And yeah. I, I've had the opportunity in my neighborhood to to work with um, people of multiple um, disabilities or menti mental ha handicaps. And, and actually in my community, we have a community um, organization called Opportunity Builders, OBI. And you're absolutely right. They're always smiling. They just want an opportunity to do something and have fun. And they, they're just like us. They want to work. So, um, 
And anyone, they do. And anyone that will give them an opportunity, they really will work hard for you. You just need to give them opportunity. You know? They will. And so we source out businesses that can get them work. And then, but the biggest challenge that we're having is there's new regulations coming down that basically are telling us that we have to put them in this box and basically tell them to do this one job. And that's not fair. You wouldn't tell me that I have to be a gardener or I have to be a auto mechanic that, you know, it's, it's taking away their freedom of choice. And I just think it's so wrong. So those are some of the things that we're actively trying to fight in legislation. Well, um, the situation you're currently in and the area of DC gives you a great opportunity to really fight for them. So I hope that you can really help them. And, and I hope that um, ongoing you'll be able to, to do that because I absolutely agree. Um, if someone wants to do something that's not on the list of whatever the, the proprietary list of our uh, people in Washington have elected to, to put them in a box for, they should be able to do whatever they want. So that's a freedom of choice, just like you and I get a freedom of choice, whether we eat a sandwich for lunch or a salad. They should have the same choice. Yeah, I, I could never, I mean, I get very anxious doing the same thing over and over again, so I couldn't imagine someone being told you only get two things to pick from for the rest of your life. That would, I would say that that would be horrible to, to be yep. put in front of. So. so we appreciate you going after this, so please go for it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so... Your friend, your friend passes away, so you basically you're definitely going to be focusing on winning for her and yep. praying for her. So that's that's clearly a no brainer. Your husband is totally on board because he got two hundred dollars uh, in tickets. So whatever, whatever the regular cost is, he's on board. So ha- how's the actual finals go of the pageant? Like um, any mishaps go on or any struggles that day? that that really uh, just were unexp- unexplained that you were just shocked that you know and then you won so I think like I said how you react to situations I'm so nice <laughs> that's one of my downfalls so I'll always share makeup share hair I just feel like we're all in the same boat we're going towards the same goal but we're all going to get there very differently so I did share hair and makeup that day and it it kind of backfired on me (laughs) the girl that uh, was getting ready was very emotional and she was crying and I played music and she didn't want to hear music so then I put my earbuds in and you know all of those things could have affected me but I just they didn't I just let it roll off and continued on with my morning I meditated before I left in the morning, I was very focused when we got to the French embassy. I didn't feel the need to wear a glamorous outfit when I wasn't in my interview outfit. I wore what was comfortable because that's who I was. I brought snacks (laughs) because that's who I am. I was very, I ate pancakes for breakfast that day, so that should tell you something. <laughs> now, she this is a pageant girl that was totally awesome. Totally, <laughs> you know, who cares about that bikini? I'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll, you know, just have some water and it'll go away, you know, exactly. Exactly. You know. I, because I've done all the work. I mean, a pancake's not going to kill me. I love that. I, can I get that plastered? everywhere yes i've done the work so one one pancake is not going to kill me i love that i love it it's so not and i was so excited you know and i think like i was excited about every aspect of my wardrobe and i think that and my costume i'm a big so the first year i don't know if you saw my costume the first year no i didn't but we definitely need to show it off so and we we definitely do it's uh, i'm big into comedy i love making people laugh so my first year, and I did one, I did win best costume that year. I made myself into a giant iPhone 
And then I did an Instagram and I was the first ladies of DC. So I photoshopped in next to me, Melania Trump and Michelle Obama. So as I was walking out on stage, I was a giant cell phone and it was like I was taking a selfie with them. <laughs> that, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, so I really. <laughs> just the idea of, okay, I'm going, uh, my costume is an iPhone and then what's so special about iPhone? You just came up with this really cool concept of what the, what the image would be inside. So that's cool. Well, I look at, I was looking at all the different costumes and a lot of the women had done the cherry blossom fest and the mall and the white house. And I just didn't want to do any of those things. So I was thinking as a woman, you know, who am I representing? And I'm representing first lady, right? Right. Exactly. Of course first lady to my husband. So I thought what more fun, you know, we had just gone through the election at that point. So Melania Trump was new and Michelle was on her way out. So it wasn't too political. <laughs> and uh, it was, I mean, everybody died laughing. It was a blast. And then the second year when I competed, I wanted to do something funny again. So I was secret service walking the presidential pets and I talked about the which presidents own those pets and also very funny. I had kind of a costume snafu on stage, so I ended up spanking my cow because he wasn't walking correctly. I mean, <laughs> but, that actually sounds much more funnier, just to be honest. I mean, did you have the little earpiece in too and like the, yeah, the, the I suit? Did, okay, yeah. That sounds cute it, and sexy. But believe it or not, I did not win best really? costume. No, I did not. Hmm. Well, maybe, nope. maybe the um, maybe they um, they said, well, you know, she's going to have this amazing outfit on. So we expect like they do. And like if you have a hit movie, then the second movie has to be even better. So, well, she also I think how DC is, I don't think it's the judges who pick. I believe she has someone in the audience and it's uh -huh. different every year. So it really is based on. A person's opinion okay so you never know if the person knew you or didn't know you or you don't know either one i mean gutsy move go outside the ball outside the, <laughs> out the box because um you just like you're saying everyone does the uh here's the lighthouse um here's the cherry blossom you know here's the national mall <sighs> I've just yeah, never, I mean, so, I've never been the one to fit in a box. Well, that sounds like an awesome life. So FYI friends, find someone who's incredible and doesn't want to fit inside a box. So that's personally married. So. Exactly. <laughs> I just wanted to take one extra second and talk about our sponsor of the week, Mid-Atlantic Video and Photography Production. No matter if you're planning a wedding and you need a wedding videographer, you're doing a music video, or you're doing commercial. They are the team to get the job done. You can reach out to them at 443-422-3830. Again, that's 443-422-3830. Or you can go right to their website at mavpp.com. Now let's get right back to this great interview. So now we're at the end of the competition. Um, tell us about, you know, so you're holding her hand. Um, how how's that experience for people that that want to understand like that moment? So you know you're down to the final two. You're waiting. You're waiting for your name to be called. So the interesting thing is, and I will not say who did ruin the surprise, but somebody did ruin the surprise for me, which was kind of a bummer they had whispered to me that I won backstage. And oh. so the surprise, it, it was, it was really sad because the surprise was taken away from me. Well, you know, in the moment, if I would have thought about it, I won photogenic and I won fitness, which the odds of me losing, winning both of those is very low. Cause that means I would have had to have just been awful in interview, <laughs> which I knew I wasn't, but in my head, I still had not put the two and two together. But doubt plays such a major, you know, doubt can mess with you so much. So you never really know, you know. That's right. what makes us human. You know, yep. I believe, I truly believe what makes us human 
and unique from any other species that we have we have thought and we have doubt and that drives well, us so 25 percent how dc does it because they're not on a mention system they are on points so how dc does it 25 percent is interview or no 50 percent's interview excuse me 25 percent swimsuit and 25 percent's evening gown so i won swimsuit And if you win photogenic, most of the time you also win interview. So that means I was at 75%, right? Right. So I would have, I would have had to do horribly an evening gown, but at the time I'm not thinking that. (laughs) Well, you, you know, you've got a lot of going on. You got the other, how many people were competing the year you won? It was, I think it was around 13, 13 or 14. You have a large field here. So I don't think you're out there with a, with a tablet um, doing your calculations. Okay. No. So let, I think you're, I think you're well, well, you know, paying attention to your competition, you know, and worrying about the judges. So, I, so what, I, I, when I, they had I don't, called, I don't agree with, I, I, I totally disagree with you when you say there's no way that you would have known. Okay. There's no way. You know. Well, no, except for the person who mouthed it to right, me. Right. Yes. Well, thank you. Spoiler. Yes. yes. We appreciate it so much. <laughs> Yes. So what happened, you know, I'm holding the girl who is, you know, now one of my really good friends and first runner up holding her hands. And I was telling her, she's beautiful. You're wonderful. You're amazing. And she just, she was so funny. She goes, I'm freaking out. I'm going to pee my pants. I think she said. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she that's just awesome. I always wonder what you guys are saying. <laughs> so, okay. That's great. Love that. And after, after the fact, she came up to me and she basically said she goes I thank you so much for your kind words I'm so sorry I couldn't form sentences back to you and I said that's completely fine <laughs> oh my god that's, yeah oh. Oh. you know but when you when you talk about true queens and people she is a person and not just her but multiple queens I competed with that year one of the girls that I competed with named her daughter after me, which is so funny because now she's going to act just like me. <laughs> uh, I'm and sure, then, just a little bit. Yeah. Right? <laughs> oh, my God. I named my daughter after you. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I love her, and I never, ever met. She did change it a little bit, so she named her Alea, but, I mean, she truly knows. She was like, I set myself up for failure on this one because she's going to be a true diva for the rest of her life. (laughs) And I have my first runner up who, you know, let me borrow the gown that she wore competing with me to nationals at Mrs. America. So, you know, those are true queens who just want to see other women succeed and yeah, I absolutely agree. Anyone that's really going to be selfless and help someone, even though they didn't win, are true. Are true princesses, or are gentlemen's. So. Yep. No, I just it's it's hard, and you know that's the one thing I want to tell women who have never competed in pageants is monetarily, it is a huge. It is a huge commitment. And so not to deter you or scare you because you can absolutely make it work and there are ways, but I just want to realistically tell people, this is not a cheap hobby. (laughs) There are dresses and gowns and makeup and hair. And I think with the misses, I think the miss, they do a little more of their own hair and makeup, but with the misses, we tend to pay for it because we just don't want to deal with it. So, yes, we could do our own hair and makeup, some of us, but we just choose not to. We make it harder on ourselves. Well, also, the organizations are more lenient. The The Mrs. organizations are really weird about making them do it themselves, depending on the organization. So I think that uh, from the MRS side, you guys, from a director side, they, uh, they finally get the MO that, like um, – professional if the girls want to pay for it is a uh, is highly appreciated so um so i just i definitely think there's a reason that makeup artists are paid to do what they do also with hairstylists and you know when you're trying to promote a brand there is a certain look you want and i do respect raquel for always expecting that of me 
and of her queens, there is an expectation of what we should look like. If you're wearing a crown, people have an expectation of how your hair is going to look and your makeup's going to look. And if you can't recreate that yourself, then you must hire someone who can. I mean, that's, that's a simple requirement. I don't think that's a um, huge. I mean, if if you're gonna if you're gonna hold the title, you need to look and and be the part. You know, you have to look, but you also have to act and be appropriate and be be the person that is respected of the title because everyone that had the title before you respected the title so you need to respect the title as much as everyone else will in the future yeah and I just think that that was one of the hardest things for me is it was one thing to look awesome and perfect on pageant night but to maintain that for a year is very difficult (laughs) it's a lot harder than you think and so I am. Are you fully uh, admitting to the general public you're not a natural girly girl? No, I'm definitely a natural girly girl, but oh, okay. I am. I am lazy. I don't like to do it myself. Oh. Okay. So, yeah. Well, but you know, having there's to nothing pay wrong for with that either. You know. No, having to pay for hair and makeup though. Some women, like my girlfriend Britt, can do her hair and it just looks phenomenal. Courtney does her own makeup and she looks amazing. And I just try and I fail and I just don't want any part of it. <laughs> yeah, but then you can also sing them out of the out of the room. So, you know, there are skills that you have. <laughs> so Well, you know. luckily, you know, you just have to be best friends with people who have their lives together because I'm always the one that shows up on time and I look good, but it took a whole lot to get me there. <laughs> hey, it doesn't matter where you, that's the whole point of this the whole point of the, the podcast. It doesn't matter where you started. It, it matters where you are at the end of life and where you are when you want to achieve your goals. So. Yeah, and I think with nationals, I was very, you know, I didn't go to nationals to win. I really, truly wanted to be in the top 15, and that was my goal. If I would have set out, I think, to win, I may have had a different outcome, but I just didn't want it at that point. Well, so, to hold the title on the national level is, is such a different, huge commitment. I mean, basically, you're not working because you're really working for that pageant for the entire year, no matter what title you win on a national level. If you think right. you're going to work and make a living and run and actually um, be a good host for that and, and represent that title, you're not. You, you really have to do one thing. As, as they say, you have to do, you do one thing for a million hours or 10 million hours to become a master at it. So you, you really need to do one thing to really become a master at it. So. No, I agree. And I truly, I don't know. I don't know what my path holds for me at this point. I know that I'm very open to new possibilities and I've done much more in the world of fashion than I ever thought I would. And, you know, much more modeling, even though I don't necessarily think I fit the ideal body type, I still have done much more modeling than I would have ever thought that I would have the opportunity to do and much more walking the runway and things like that. So I'm just grateful that I've had the opportunity and of the relationships that it's brought me and, well, you, Where had, I'm, you had said that specifically that you had left the banking industry after 10 years, right? Or nine yes. years? Uh, actually, 14. <laughs> oh, well, not to, not to gloat, Polly, but anyway. Um, <laughs> um, so, where, where, where are, are, you, are you, do you want to say where you are now? Like, what are you doing? Because it sounds like you were really happy that you made a change. I'm so happy that I made a change and I'm doing a plethora of jobs. Like I said, I'm definitely doing some modeling on the side just, uh, but my full time is health coaching. So I work with people not to find a diet to fix their life. I work with people to truly become the best versions of themselves. And that's through their relationship with food, their relationship with fitness through relationships. It's an all encompassing thing. So the people that I work with, really want to kind of reinvent themselves in their way of health. 
and lead their life differently. I have people who come to me that are struggling with anything from osteoporosis to skin issues, whether they're in their 20s or 30s or even 40s and they're having acne issues. Those are all things that I really specialize in holistically and naturally. And depression, anxiety, those are all things that can be food related too. So it's definitely my passion to speak on this platform. And I practice what I preach every single day, anyone that knows me. (laughs) So I'm just so excited and blessed that my husband has been so supportive to allow me the opportunity to build something that is truly what I love to do. Well, that's awesome. That's a totally different I mean, going from banking into uh, <laughs> health and nutrition is a total, and if, if that's more rewarding for you and you feel that you're changing people's lives, then I, I commend you for doing that. And if you can make a living at it, go for it. I mean, that's, that's amazing. You can make a living at anything you set your mind to. It just, life will surprise you in the ways that it happens. I think that sometimes we set out and we think it's going to go one way and then it goes in a completely opposite direction. But as long as you get to do what fulfills you, and when I talk to my clients and talk to my friends about this one thing, I always say, no matter what you're doing in life, if you leave and you feel drained, that's not fulfilling you. If you leave and you feel energetic and you're excited about life, keep doing that thing because that's what's going to keep you happy in the long run. I think that's a great way to really sum up our whole conversation today. I can't, you know. Um, so, for people that want to to actually become Miss DC or just do a married pa- MRS pageant, as I call it. Yep. Um, what are some just check check things list that you would recommend? You know, imagine someone who's nervous, never never been, never really done a pageant. So basically, you three years ago. Yeah. So, okay. Check definitely check out the website, watch the YouTube videos. Raquel's great, especially for the Mrs. DC pageant. Mrs. Virginia is actually really great too. You can look up, watch their swimsuit, watch their evening gown, kind of get a feel. For me, it was more about the director. And I did a lot of research on Raquel before I decided to go with her pageant. And the reason I went with her pageant is because I felt she was going to challenge me the most. And she definitely has. I've grown as a person. So just in doing something that scares you, find that person who's going to push you to your next level. And reach out to Queens. I mean, most of us, I, myself included, I'm happy to talk to anyone. I'm happy to tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly (laughs) because I'm a transparent person and I find the positive in everything. And I don't think that anyone's going to run for a pageant and not find a positive experience within that. Well, Leah, I really appreciate you coming on and talking to our audience and really giving them opportunity and understanding about the pageant that you've won and your fantastic year so we really want to commend you on that so well thank you so much i appreciate it i had so much fun and you know i'm always happy to help with anything we really appreciate that so thank you thanks so much paul okay hold on one second all right so how do you think it went you there? Oh, she didn't even hear. As I mentioned on our last show, our goal is to have a weekly show, but at the time being, they're going to be random. But we are striving to have a weekly show, so please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned.